three ways a plan can go with life. You can make it, you can break it, or you can pop it, knock it right out of the park. Today we want to help you find the pop in your life, the perfect life-changing decision. My name is Joanne, these are my colleagues Ryan and Tammy, and today we are here to help you find the decision that pops. So first of all, we'll just go through our agenda consisting of our, of our problem statement, analysis, decision criteria, uh, recommendation, and our financial and implementation plan. So first of all, the problem that you came to us today was first, what plan would ensure your personal and business success in both the short term and the long term? And we want to make sure that when you walk out of this room, you have a plan in your back pocket. So first, a bit of character analysis. We know that you are very young and social as you are 18 years old, you're a high school senior, and you're about to graduate. So you want to explore, you want to do some uh, cool things in your life, and you're not sure what steps to take. So first of all, you have a really prominent social life. You have a girlfriend, and we hope that your relationship lasts for as long as possible. And you're also a people person. You like talking to people. You like getting out there and knowing people. You, that's part of what makes you so successful as an entrepreneur. And next, you're also very entrepreneurial. So first, you're very risk tolerant. You, over the last couple of years, with your multiple business ventures, even a lemonade stand when you were little, you built up a risk tolerance and you know what to do and when to back away from a venture when something is wrong. And you're also, very, you're also a very creative thinker. You like to think outside the box. And you like to go places where no one has ever been. And that's what differentiates you from the rest. And that's what also makes you successful as an entrepreneur. And lastly, you have your own company right now, Pop Culture, which is very, very important to you, and you believe that it is a business that will allow you success in the long term. And you also have some technical skills, as long, as, along with being a high school senior. You play basketball regularly, so we know you like to keep active and you're very competitive. And you also have some casing skills, so you have the business knowledge uh, to back up your entrepreneurial ventures. And you also have cooking skills, which of course are very important when you own a popcorn company. So some assets and some finances to go along with this. So right now you're looking at a potential scholarship for the next couple of years. Um, a full four year tuition to Simon Fraser University, which is a very good offer, but we'll get into why that might not be such a good idea later on when Ryan talks. And then you also have some savings saved up because of your venture over the last couple of years. You've put in 25, a steady $25 a month towards your TFSA to save up throughout your high school career, which is very good and we want to continue, make sure you use that very wisely. And lastly, you have your company. You gain $7,500 from your company and you make around $30,000 in sales from your company. So we think that's a very, very huge asset to you. So in conclusion, you have a lot of assets and we want to make sure that you keep them. And then just a current financial analysis of your current budget and consisting of your income from your pop culture company. Of course, you still have the $5,000 in savings that you have brought up over the last couple of years. And then you have some expenses, car and gas, rent, entertainment, your usual expenses as a high school senior. And so overall, you have a monthly surplus of $25, which you have been putting into a TFSA over the last couple of years. So from this analysis, we have come up with four decision criteria that we think are very, very important to you and close to what you value. First of all is the risk-reward scenario. We know that you're an entrepreneur, you're risk tolerant, but we also want to make sure that if you have high risk, you also have a high reward. So we want to make sure that your risk-reward balances out in all situations. Second of all, we want you to be satisfied. We know you're a very social person, and we want you to maintain that social life and maintain your relationship with your girlfriend because we know that relationships are, of course, very, very important to you. And then we also want you to be financially stable in the short term. As a high school senior, especially coming out of school, we want to make sure that you're, you set yourself up to be sustainable in the long term, which is our fourth decision criteria. I will now like to pass along to Tam, uh, Ryan to talk about our alternatives. So when it comes to making this important decision, there are a few things that you can do. First of all, you could split it straight down the middle. You could both own your part-time business, now located in Vancouver, BC, and go to school at the same time. It's truly the best of both worlds. This would fulfill your family's expectations, but unfortunately, 
would have a bit of a lack of focus. You know, you're spending just a little bit of time here, a little bit of time there. Where are you really getting value if you're only putting like a little bit of your time in each little place? How are you going to move ahead with one thing? You would lose your network in your hometown. That's the biggest advantage to your current business. If you lose your network, you lose your clients. You're not going to have anyone to sell your popcorn to, at least for the first little while, and you'll lose a lot of revenue that way. And you could just potentially burn out. University is very demanding, you know, you're writing exams, you're studying very hard, and it can be very difficult to run a part-time business on the side of doing that. So this isn't a personally satisfactory plan because of the burnout, and also it's just not sustainable. Otherwise, you could be an unpopped colonel. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a bit of a corny joke. Let's get serious here. This one, of course, would mean that you would spend your full time at university at Simon Fraser there. Just imagine this life. Oh, man, it's so great, right? And you could fulfill your family's expectations. You'd be able to use that financial assistance that you have. That's it's a great opportunity, right? You could take advantage of that. But unfortunately, you completely lose your business. I don't know how you're ever going to get back in the popcorn industry once you leave that. And you wouldn't be satisfied as an entrepreneur. As Joanne mentioned earlier, you're an entrepreneurial person. You want to satisfy yourself. If you don't like something in life, you're not going to stick with it. You're going to be wasting your time. We don't want you to waste your time. No. And you're still going to lose that network. Everyone that you've connected with through your popcorn business. So therefore, this is just a risky plan. There's just not enough reward there. Going to university is for people who don't know what they want to do. People who just want a straight path. You're not like that. So it's, it's just risky for you. And it, you, it wouldn't satisfy you. You could end up dropping out of university just because you're not happy there. So we present to you our recommendation. The perfect pop. All right? The perfect pop. Now, you would pursue your pop culture business full time in your hometown. It's very exciting to be able to continue managing the business, running it. Your, your income would grow over time as the business grows. There's plenty of opportunities for expansion for sure. You'd be satisfied as an entrepreneur and you keep your almost safe, profitable opportunity right now. You have a profitable operation that you are working on right now. That's very, very good. Not a lot of entrepreneurs have that. And you'll be able to learn by experience. Nobody can teach you to be an entrepreneur from a textbook. It just doesn't work like that. That's not how business works. You can't learn to be an entrepreneur from a textbook, right? So you need to learn by doing. And with your business that you have right now, it's so special because you've been learning by doing for years now. And you can continue doing that. It's so exciting. Unfortunately, you would lose that scholarship, but your parents have some money saved up for you, so if you wanted to go back to school later in the future, I guess that would be okay. So this satisfies all of our decision criteria, and that is why we definitely recommend that you pick the perfect pop and keep running your business. I'd now like to pass it off to Tammy to teach you how you can implement this plan. Thank you, Ryan. So for our short-term plan, it will compose of all the actions that you need to do in the first year. And the first action is making the decision, which will include that you do not pursue the university at the moment and also continue with your business full time and also research uh, regarding your option. And this needs to happen immediately. And since you invest of your whole time in the business, and as you say that you expect $60,000 of income um, from this year, you will have a, a double the monthly income than your normal income, which is right now, so it will be $1,250. And unfortunately, we will ask you not to go to Thailand trip just because looking at your long-term satisfaction of the business. Along with that, you will continue with your current budget, which is $600. And obviously, we do not think it was a wise idea to make cuts to your budget. Like, you have this pretty girlfriend, and it's important that you maintain her. And so gifts are okay. And at the same time, we also thought that your budget was not that out of uh, whack that we needed to restructure it for you. And you will have monthly surplus as your income will increase, and you so that 
monthly surplus of $650 will go for the monthly investment in your TFSA for your business. And you should also research into your line of credit and by the 12th month, you should obtain $17,000 for the line of credit for that $30,000 of investment that you wanted to in the future. In the medium term, in the second year, you will have an expected income increase because as you make that investment of $30,000 at the end of first year, you will have an expected increase of $30,000 which we hope to see in your successful business and so from the 13th month your income will increase per year to $22,500 and you should also start making uh, your payments for line of credit which will work around about $760 per month and then you will also invest your surplus because of your increase in income that $250 in month in your savings account. And at last, we will also recommend you to evaluate your plan, see how your business is going, what changes you need to make, are you even thinking about pursuing university later on. So this is our financial plan for year two, so your income, as we said, is expected to um, increase and your, you will have that increase in expenses because you will be paying your debt of line of credit and they will still give you uh, $250 of monthly gain which you will put into savings which will act as your emergency fund. And this is our long-term implementation plan that after two years you will have an expected income increase because we hope to see your business increasing and being successful more and more year to year. And also you will continue making your uh, line of credit payments of $760 per month and the monthly surplus of $412. Obviously this year we have extra savings because of extra income. And then at last we'll also ask you to value your plan if you're even considering to go to university or you want to just continue with your successful business. And this is our financial plan for year three. So as you can see, there's uh, an expected increase in the income of about $21,250 uh, $21, per year. And it also your expenses will work around the same of $600. And your debt payments still stay the same of $760. But you will still have monthly gain, which, has, which as you mentioned, will go towards your savings as emergency funds. And so here's our, our, what we hope to see with your savings account. Um, that in year two you'll be able to save about $3,000 after investing in your business um, and in year three you'll be able to save about $5,000 so that will work around $8,000 at the end of year three. But sometimes things might not go as expected so in case if your business is not successful we'll ask you to use the emergency fund that we just showed you before from your savings and if you're not able to get a loan that we expect you to get to to that $30,000 of investment, you might have to take more time to save for your business. And lastly, if your parents are not happy with you just pursuing full-time business and ask you to leave the house, hey, you got a girlfriend, you can move with her, you can share money, and it'll work out fine, and then you'll still utilize more time to save for your business for that $30,000 of investment. And now, I would like to pass it on to Joanne to provide a closure to our presentation. All right. So the problem you approached us today with, with was what plan would ensure your personal and business success in both the short term and long term. And we wanted to make sure that you would be able to do that. So the plan we have proposed to you, the perfect pop as we aptly named it, is first to focus on your business. We want you to focus on one thing and really pour your energy into that. And because we know that you're a very entrepreneurial person, we know that you enjoy your business and you think it would work out in the long term as, and we agree with you, we suggest that you would focus on your business first. And then you would spend your time saving your money for that first year because as you are pouring more time to work full time in there, we think that you'll, you're going to make more money. So then you'll be able to save up enough money to pay off about half of the loan. And then the rest we suggest you take out a line of credit. And then with this, uh, eventually in the next two years, you'll pay off your loan and be able to save for an emergency fund. So what does this give you? What impacts, what impacts are you going to get? First of all, you're going to be satisfied as an entrepreneur. We wanted to make sure at the beginning that the most important aspect was that you, as an entrepreneur, you are very satisfied with whatever plan we propose to you. And second of all, you're, you get to profit from your business. You get to receive some money. We don't want you to be out doing uh, nothing for the years that you do after high school. We want to make sure that you're earning some money so you can uh, you know, buy a necklace for your girlfriend once in a while. And then you're also learning from experience. And because you are an entrepreneur and you're continuing to uh, start this business, we want to make sure that you continue to learn from your experience and take out that line of credit and continue uh, to gain experience. 
And then, so overall, you're also allowed to do a social life. So we want to make sure that this plan is the perfect plan, the POC to go with your business. Time. Thank you. That was the last slide? Yes. That was. Yeah. Very, very interesting, very, very nice presented. Uh, uh, so, just one question. Yeah, so, so, you, you took a line of credit as financing uh, for $30,000 that you needed, that needed to expand the business? So, we looked at, first of all, your first year, you would take your profits to first, you know, check, check it out, work full time, and save up money. And then for your, around $12,000 of that $30,000 you need. And then take out a line of credit at the end of that year. And then over the next two years with your profits to pay that line of credit off because we want you to pay it off as soon as possible. Okay. And if you don't get that, do you have any other, did you see, look at any other alternatives? Maybe go to drag into debt or anything else? So we thought that she would first um, potentially uh, potentially use more time to save. We know that you're um, you know you're saving twelve thousand in that first year, right? So we know that you might your business might expand the next year, and you'll be able to save up more money without first investing that thirty thousand dollars back into your business. But as you've mentioned, you've done some research already. You could potentially get a government. Um, grant, you could go to Dragon's Den if that's something that you think is very possible. It's really up to you, but we think that if you wanted to save up more, that you could do that, but there are lots of options open to you, so you can really do what you want. So, awesome job. Um, so I'm Oliver, like I'm super stoked because I wanted to follow my passion. Um, but the one thing that I think is evident is that I do have some challenges when it comes to personal finances. So I'm all about like kind of learning and failing, but what would you do to kind of mitigate some of that um, around my personal finances and kind of help me out there? So based on what you've told us that you're spending right now, as long as you stick to a strict budget, which does by the way include several uh, exciting things like entertainment budgets and food, gifts for Katie, then you will be able to make this work. For the first year, it will be a little tight, but you're fairly young and you still have your parents' support, so you should be okay. And then after you have your emergency fund to rely on if anything goes wrong. Uh, now that Oliver's gonna be here, that I'm gonna be full-time work, what am I doing with my part-time employee? Is he there, is he gone? And if he is gone, what are you guys doing with that next year? Uh, the part-time employee can remain for sure. We want to bring on employees as the business grows, actually. In order to grow the income of the business, you can't do everything as yourself, so therefore you're going to need to re retain and even hire new employees as the business grows. Did you get the last uh, the opportunity cost of losing the scholarship? So if, if you decide to go back to school after two years, your business is going to be what is the opportunity cost? What did you lose? You might have lost like the scholarship, you're obviously gonna use it if you are since you're pursuing with a passion as we recommend. But then at the same time you're learning from the experience and even if you save the money from your business, then you are able to report it back into your educational funds later on. Uh, is there any idea uh, on expansion into similar um, or into different cities outside of Canada? One place that you could possibly expand to is Edmonton. You do know how to hire employees and get them to run the business for you. So it's only a short drive away. So you could have employees in, hired in Edmonton that would help you expand the business. Okay. Thank How did you weigh out, so just in terms of like learning by experience versus education, like which, what made you kind of factor kind of like learning by experience? Because firstly we saw that as a young student, even if you have your lovely business, and then looking at your personality, that you're this people person, this social person, you're someone that would learn more from experience instead of just like doing that one-to-one -one connection with the professor. 
professor, you might see things that you don't already have instead of just looking, looking at the textbook like you like you just so. Still 20 seconds. <laughs> if you'd like. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.